This is Echo 3, and let's discuss Munrovers. This is a double feature tutorial, and I will be highlighting two different types of rovers and two different ways to deploy them. I'm making a very simple probe core rover and placing it in the large payload bay. The docking port junior will let the probe detach from the payload bay and drive out. By building the probe in the bay, I can make sure that everything will fit. Landing gear, batteries, solar panels, and an antenna, and the probe has the bare necessities. If you have built rovers before, none of this will look special to you. But this tutorial is going to focus more on the deployment methods rather than the most capable rover designs. I'm adding some science experiments because that's what you do with rovers. Once the rover is designed, I'm going to take it over to the vertical assembly building and there design the rest of the rocket to take this thing to the MUN. I'm starting by designing the descent stage for a MUN landing. The lander is quite light, so very little fuel is needed, and four ant engines and two spider engines will provide enough thrust to safely land. The rover probe is a poor choice for a rocket, so I'm adding another probe core to control the flight of the rocket. Might as well make this a relay while I'm at it. It won't really do much for this mission, but relays like this were useful on my last mission to EVE. I'm tweaking the placement of the parts just a little bit and clipping them slightly inside so the fairing won't have to be so wide. Wide fairings and skinny rockets can result in the rocket having the flamey end up. When that happens, you won't be going to space. I start building the cruiser stage. A terrier engine will be powerful enough for this little rocket, so I'm using a breaking ground engine plate to attach it. Lastly, one orange tank and a skipper engine, and this rocket has all the power and delta V needed to get to the MUN. A few fins just to keep it stable on ascent. I'm adding an action group to staging where when I hit the space bar, the control point will change to the probe core on the lander instead of the rover. I even took out a little fuel from the cruiser stage because I have more than enough delta V for this mission. On the launch pad, I set the MUN as my target, throttle up, and press space bar. This is not a very special launch. I follow a pretty standard gravity turn and go right for the MUN. The MUN, at this time, is in the right place to start my ejection burn, so I forego the formalities of circularizing around Kerbin and start burning directly for the MUN. The booster stage will get me most of the way into orbit, and then the cruiser stage will carry me the rest of the way until the MUN descent stage. The stage doesn't have a high thrust to weight ratio, but it is efficient. I get a close encounter with the MUN and time warp there. I will circularize my orbit around the MUN and decide where the rover should land. A crater rim can be a good place because I should be very close to three or four MUN biomes. Driving around the MUN can be very hazardous, especially for a little rover. So, if I can get close to multiple biomes without doing very much driving, then this will make things much easier. I decoupled the cruiser stage so it will crash into the MUN and proceed to land. The landing itself was uneventful. However, the rover wheels were going to turn out to be a little bit more difficult than I imagined. Taking the descent nice and slow so I don't break anything on the way down, I, uh, hate to screw stuff up on tutorials. <laughs> the rover ended up being a little difficult to get out uh, as the wheels, I don't know, they didn't have very much traction on the MUN surface and began to slide. We're going to have to get that figured out. So, let's send Bob to the MUN to investigate these really, really weird rover wheels and why they just slip all over the MUN surface. We'll still get science out of this mission. It'll just be tricky. Alright, come on. Stop. Stop, Rover. <laughs> Boy, this, this was really a pain. Um, I don't know what's... Back in the space plane hangar, I designed another rover. This is to be a crewed rover that several brave Kerbals will land on the MUN. This rover doesn't need to be very big, and you can see I'm using a rather Spartan approach to its design. By making the rover as light and small as possible, it will be easier to transport. 
As always, mass saved is Delta V gain. Many of the parts I'm using are from the Breaking Ground DLC. I have really enjoyed what I can do with them, but obviously, you can build something similar without these parts. Some solar panels, batteries, and double checking these wheels to make sure everything is working properly. I hope these wheels work better than the ones on the other room. I'm thinking they will. What's going on? Again, I take the rover to the vertical assembly building to build the launch vehicle. I use a docking port junior to attach the rover, then start working on the rest of the landing and return stage. The engine plane makes a nice cargo hold for the rover. I played around with the different engine plate sizes and the placement of the rover to make sure the rover with a kerbal in the command seat would have enough room. I didn't want the kerbal's head to glitch into the engine plate and cause some kind of crack and attack. I also tried a couple different landing legs to see what the right amount of clearance is. It's always a good idea to make sure the landing legs stick down further than anything else on the bottom of your rocket. If you break your engine, you'll end up with a MUN base instead. Two spark engines will provide enough thrust to land and return this stage. Now, if you end up paying close attention, you'll notice that I end up forgetting to put a decoupler under my heat shield. But don't worry, I didn't, or at least, I didn't until I began re-entering Kerbin's atmosphere realize I had a problem. If you watch until the end of the video, you can see how our hero pilots, Jebediah and Valentina, dealt with my incompetent design. This was the first time I ever had to bleep anything Valentina said over the comms. The rest of this rocket is fairly typical. I'm using the Wolfhound engine on the cruiser stage. Being that this rocket is launching more mass, the booster stage is using two of the 36-ton tanks and a mainsail engine. Jebediah, Valentina, and Bob will compose the crew. You can see I end up using the staging action key to change the control point to the capsule. I did this on the first rover as well. If I didn't do this, the rover would be facing forward instead of up and this would cause problems on my launch so I did this to keep things uh, keep things in line and so my rover will go up instead of some crazy direction this launch is pretty similar to the last launch I use a gravity turn to launch into orbit and by gravity turn I mean that I slightly tilt the craft eastward once I hit about 100 meters per second then I let the craft follow the prograde marker by 35 kilometers or so, I'm burning almost entirely sideways. Reaching orbit is more a matter of velocity as opposed to altitude. Drag loss is not as big a factor as gravity loss. This time, the MUN has moved a bit, so I will circularize around Kerbin before setting up my ejection burn to the MUN. Nothing unique about the way I'm doing this. At MUN periapsis, perimun, I will burn retrograde and circularize. Because my MUN orbit is going to differ from the inclination of my rover, I'll have to set up an inclination change. An inclination change at this altitude will be a bit costly, but the craft has plenty of delta V for this part of the mission. Once my orbit crosses over the location of the first landing, I set up a deorbit maneuver to plan a surface rendezvous. You can see that I have Kerbal Engineer readout on the top of my screen, but no mods were used in the planning and execution of these maneuvers. The cruiser stage is used to begin the descent maneuver and is decoupled on a crash course to the MUN surface. The maneuver just above the targeted landing site will help me gauge when to start my burn. The low thrust to weight of this craft means that Jeb has to be very careful during the landing. The lander is going to be several hundred meters away from the first rover. Good thing Bob and Jeb brought their own rover. Now the lander is safe. Bob gets the rover out. Jeb gets out, joins Bob, and they're going to go check out the first rover. While small, this rover seems to do a good job on the MUN surface. Bob gives it two thumbs up, or whatever Kerbals call that digit. At least, I think they're pointing those digits up, and I think it translates the same as it does in my language. Well, 
I don't know what's up with the first rover, but Bob and Jeb seem to enjoy this second rover and are having a pretty good time on the Mun surface. But time to go back and join Val in the capsule. Kerbal Kind has successfully landed two rovers using two different techniques on the Mun. What future endeavors should this curious race undertake? There is a public comment section included with this official video. You may kindly leave your remarks there. Also included is the ability to like this video and subscribe to this channel. That is, if those digits you held up when you saw this video are the good ones. As the mission came to an end, my design blunder was quickly realized. After some choice words, Valentina figured out to eject the heat shield and was able to land the pod safely. Over the video feed, she was shown holding up some digits on her hands that differed from the ones used earlier. I don't know what that means. Hopefully those were also good digits. Thanks for watching. Let's discuss rovers and Kerbal body language.